Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so we're kind of in the middle of... We're, our game actually works pretty well. I mean, it's probably got some glitches that we have to address, but for the most part, most part, we've got our um, game working the way we want it. It bounces off the sides, it bounces off the walls, we can get some ricochets, and if it hits the bottom, it resets. Now we haven't created a score counter, we haven't tracked our lives, we haven't built a reset button, but we've done so much I want to do some fun stuff which is the design so now that we have done the the skeleton of the code we've done the basics of the game engine where some you know coders think that's where the real beauty is and I agree but we also want to make this something that will catch people's eye and make it look like something that they might actually be impressed with so let's look at how we can make this thing look a little nicer okay so the easiest thing is the colors like yellow blocks those are pretty ugly so let's remember how we start this so when we created these I added this at the beginning knowing where we were going so there's a couple little tricks we can do so if you look at it in our constructor of each block we're setting them all to the same color so a real fancy thing would be to set the number of colors so for example I could write a method called set colors right there and you can actually write that into the constructor so every time a block is constructed it will um, <coughs> set the colors and what I'll do is I'll set the colors with those parameters row and column okay in other words I'm going to use the rows and columns to determine what colors are let me just give you actually an example before I write this method just to show you what I'm saying for example a, a very simple thing would be remember everything is going to default to zero so I've given it an RG and a B, which I fill with when I display it, right? So if I don't do anything, if I just, let's just say I set R equal to 255, only that, it will just all be red, okay? So this will make all red blocks, okay? Now, if I didn't want it to be so plain, I could do something clever, like do 50 times um, row, and, and then let it kind of gradient from black into um, red. Oh. Oh, yes. I forgot to tell you about this. So, actually, let me address this really fast and then we'll do the colors. Um, you might notice this. I got confused in one of the, I think, part three when we made the blocks because they were switched, the numbers. And the numbers I meant were these numbers. And I kept switching the I and the J and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. Well, what was wrong is I wrote the word row and column for the first two parameters in our constructor of the block, okay? But then when I did the X, by the way, which is going to draw out all of these things, if you think about a row, a row is a series of blocks across the screen. Well, the X goes this direction, right? So that means X should be the width of the block times the column, okay? It's how long that column is, right? because this is column zero, this is column one, column two. So this should have been column, and this should have been row, okay? Well, if I just switch that, like that, given the way I've built my code, it's now not going to work. So really, you think, okay, so what? So I should come up here and change this to column and row, okay? So it really doesn't make a huge difference because I've just changed the words. However, when I'm going to go through this, I'll be able to keep track of what's going on. So now when I do 50 times row, let's do like, um, let's make more rows. Let's give it like um, six rows. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We'll just leave it six by six because we're going to be dealing with colors. Now you can see the gradient is with this row. And if I were to go in and say, no, let's, let's make a gradient with the column. I can make it so it goes like that. So bam, there you go. So there you have a set of um, ways of making like a simple gradient. But I want to do something a little bit more clever than that. So instead of just defining it on that, um, well, actually, let me go back real fast and show you why this might be a problem. Let's say I get to the point where I have 16. Oh, that's not going to matter. because But well, I actually did. So I have 16 now. If you see what happens is I reach the end of the gradient. Remember. Um, colors in RGB can only go up to 255, right? So when you get above that, it's saturated, it just stays. So like a thousand is the same as 255. Basically, it's full red. So 
there's no way for me to actually deal with that. I mean, I guess I could. I could write a series of if statements and stuff, but I'm gonna do that outside. So I'm just gonna write a method for that. And I'm gonna take into account what row and what column I'm in, and I'll write my function from there. A bunch of code. Actually, pause the video and go ahead and write your own set colors code right here. And test it out, because this is kind of the fun part. And then, I'll just write mine and then you guys can skip to that part. Okay, so hopefully you guys came up with something pretty cool. I came up with this kind of gradient that reverses itself so if you kind of want to see how it goes so basically I just use one parameter I, I like blue in the background it kind of looks pretty so anyways I decided to go with nine different steps so I step I basically went through column nine modulus so remember dividing by zero nine so I have nine steps and I just go through it and I just copy and pasted this and I just go R goes from 50 up to 250 and then once it reaches the top it starts to go down back to 50 and so that way it kind of just steps up and if I were to have more than that way it will just constantly go from one gradient to another so it doesn't really matter um, I didn't do anything with the columns so it's just based on the rows um, which is strange because I'm using columns <laughs> anyway I'm not gonna go back and fix it um, so, I do want to point out if you're watching this and you're wondering why I don't use case or switch with a case, that's of course what I would do. Um, if you guys know how to do that, then yeah, that's great. I haven't taught that yet to my students, so um, that's something I'm going to give in the new, the next tutorial series, which is going to be on building Tetris. Uh, so we haven't learned array lists and we haven't learned um, switch case yet. So that would have obviously been a faster way of doing this but I'll do that on the next part so let's keep going and let's see how else we can do it so first of all the paddle so um, one thing I don't like is my paddle so now that, let me actually make this a little bigger too so just to make it um, easier to see we'll just make the screen bigger you can always change the size because everything was written so that it will will change okay so the first thing is um, and by the way, I know that the real blackout, sometimes there's a, a, um, a, a space below. So what you can do is you can just do like, um, if you do like I plus five right there, that'll actually, oh, wrong one. If you do like J plus five, that will give it some space. And the reason people like space is because once you break through, you can get the ball stuck up there and it starts bouncing off of there. So um, kind of. Let me show you this. Let's make this like um, three. So what you can do is you can basically get the ball up there. Oh, great. I mean, I mean, I think you get the idea, but now that I've started like showing it, I might as well finish it. So let's just get the ball, see if Mr. Tho can beat his own game. Oh, no. Don't want to break it. I want to get it up there. Oh no, I'm gonna miss. Pressure's on. Okay, over there. Oh, I got it. There we go. Oh no. Go that way. <laughs> get up there. <laughs> this tutorial has gone from like trying to show you guys how to code to like me showing you how I'm not able to play my own game. Okay, I did it. All right. So, anyways, that was a waste of all of our lives, but. You get the idea. So you could do that shifting by just adding a number here. So that's going to be all kind of part of the reshaping of the game. So let me go ahead and make this um, to a bigger number because I want it to have more so it's easier to see. And I'll make this like an 8. doesn't really matter. Okay, so what I want to do is I want this um, game now. I want to like kind of configure the... Uh, well, let's start with the ball. Okay, the ball is kind of plain to me. So one easy trick you can do with the ball. So we have this main ellipse, but we could also draw another ellipse right above it. And we can go ellipse, and we'll do the same x and y, but we'll do d plus one, comma d plus one, and then 
I'll do a fill color. Let's do a fill. Let's say we did. Um, uh, let's keep it the middle of it, 200, and but for the outside, we'll do 255. Now this is kind of silly because you, you you could actually just do stroke, and change the stroke color. Uh, that's not very. Let me go D plus five, fifteen. Let's try that. Make sure it works. Yeah, you see how it's got that little orb around it. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm drawing two balls around each other. So it's kind of like um, a stroke. So that's kind of a cool little optical illusion you can do. And you can change the color if you want, but I'll let you guys say that's a little trick I'm going to use for a lot of stuff. So. Um, I'm going to do maybe just 10. Let's see what that looks like. So there's my little ball. And it's, it kind of looks around. So, so far, so good. We're kind of looking cool. Now let's make our paddle look cooler. So how are we going to make our paddle look cooler? Well, the paddle is just this little rectangle. So we'll do the same kind of trick. But actually, let me show you one cool thing. Is you can add another number here. So let's add like a 5. Now we'll just round the edges. So you see how the edges are kind of rounded? Let me make it rounder, so I'll do like 15 again. So if there's a fifth parameter on the rectangle function, it curves the edges. So instead of being like a, a block, it's kind of like a smooth corner like that. So it's kind of nice. By the way, you could do all this these tricks in your block class too, if you wanted to. So you could like make all your blocks have some sort of highlight around them. You kind of get the idea of where we're going. So we're making a cool thing. By the way, I have used images in the past. I didn't want to use an image this time because I wanted the the um, block. It's I wanted the whole game to be like self-contained. So let's go ahead and do our little trick. So I'm just going to copy this thing here, but I'm going to. So there's my main one, but this one I'm going to change to. Uh, I'm just going to use a gray color. So if you just use one parameter, it's kind of like a gray. So this will be a gray one. And I'm just going to make it like five pixels bigger. And you got to be careful here because when you do that, it's not going to be perfect because remember, we're drawing it from the top left corner. So, what I actually let's make it six pixels wider and six pixels, and we'll shift this by minus three. So, that'll basically make, make it so it goes all the way around the thing. And there we go. So, now you kind of get the idea of where I'm going. So all of a sudden, my game, just in like this small little tutorial, went from being like this plain little yellow kind of ugly thing, and I kind of let it go, but it's really bugging me. But now we've kind of got a game that looks pretty cool. In fact, I mean, it looks like something that I wouldn't mind playing. And so um, I think what we'll do next, I don't know how, how long it is. It looks like it's kind of long. I'm going to cut it here for that, so that I think that'll be enough. Uh, and then the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a score counter, and that's pretty easy to do. So I think in that video, I'll do both a score counter and I'll do a, um, a starting screen and an ending screen. So and I think that's pretty much it. I think we're pretty much done. Oh, I, I will show you guys how to like make a new level. So what happens when you clear the board? You want to just basically regenerate it. It's pretty easy to do. You can actually just call the setup again. So the in the main function, so I'll kind of give you a hint. But this right here, which basically makes the board, I could actually take all of this code and make this into a new board, and that would actually reset the game. So we'll go ahead and do that in the next tutorial. Hope you guys are enjoying it so far. We're pretty much done. Thank you guys for everything. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And there's my daughter, my little coder. She was already in a video earlier. What?